Okay, we're in section 18. This is the section on the absolute and conditional convergence. Um, I, I realize that for a lot of students, it's, it's difficult. Uh, don't feel alone in that, it is difficult. Um, AST, the alternating series test, uh, and then we go through examples, all right? So um, we'll do the examples. Uh, the first example might be a little tough, by the way. I'm, I don't know why I started with that example. It's a tough one. But uh, two, I'll look at that one. It's another tough one, believe it or not. And then I think we'll probably boil down to something a little bit more simple. So I'm going to say three is a simpler one. Four is simpler. Five is simpler. Six is simple. Uh, maybe not. Let me take a look at that. Maybe not. I get to think about that. Right? That's going to require some thinking there. So let's take a look. Seven, simple. Eight doesn't look bad. Uh, nine doesn't look bad. Uh, 10 doesn't look bad. 11. Oh, then you'll have homework. So my encouragement to you is that you got to do homework. All right, after you do this problem here. Let me go back. And um, you certainly, some of these problems get more difficult than those, but we'll help you get more consistent um, when you start doing homework that things get a little bit simpler for you. All right, let me do another share for you. And give me a second here. And just give me a second here. Got to get back to my problems here. So let's do number um, one. And this one says, you know, show that this here uh, converges by computer special sums. So what I'd like to do is just, you know, do partial sums. All right, so I'm going to copy this, and I'll talk. I'll talk you through it. All right, so let me go over here, and we'll talk you through the steps. I'm going to paste this in. And we're going to talk you through it. All right, so I'm going to write down you know, what S1 would be. It would just be the first term, one half. What's S2? Well, it's the first two terms, which is one half minus one half, which is zero. What's S3? Well, it's the first three terms. So if I add that together, just looking at it, that's one third. What's S4? I think you get the idea. Well, I'm going to use the first four terms, one, two, three, four. That would be zero now. So I think I'm sort of ready to write it down. And I'll, I'll write down what the partial sequence looks like, partial sum sequence look like. And that sequence, you know, the partial sums. Well, let's take a look at that. What's going to, what's going to look like? We're looking at the partial sums. So one half, zero, one third. We'll look at the key later. Zero, one quarter, zero. You get the idea I'm doing? So let's see if I did that right. One half, zero, one third, one quarter, zero. One fifth, zero. One sixth, zero, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, looking at it, I'm gonna say, eh, it, it's not bad, it's written over here for you. And then, then the come because you know, what's the limit of that? that sequence, I'll put this over here. So what's the limit? This is, you know, if I'm looking at this over here, I hope you realize that, you know, one of the terms would be zero and the other form of the term would be one over n. And let's look at the limit of that. Limit as, you know, n goes off to infinity of zero would be zero. And the limit as n goes off to infinity would also go to zero. So I'm gonna say the limit of that sequence is definitely zero, all right? Definitely zero. All right, so we got that over here and put that down. Now, by the way, it goes on to say the positive series is, right? By the way, when they say the partial sums, they're talking about this thing up here, right? The positive series is, Right? We're looking at the positive series now. Someone says, what is that? By the way, this series converges. All 
but now they're looking at a different series and they're looking at a positive term series. So let's write that series down for you. So the positive term series, I'll just, you know, look at this one over here and look at the positive term series now, positive term series. So this is not a positive term series. It's actually going back to what plus or minus. So what's positive term series would be, be one half plus one half plus one third plus one third plus one fourth plus one fourth. Well, I guess I could write that down, right? The sum n equals, well, let me write this down, n equals two to infinity. And then what would you get over here? You'd get one over n plus one over n. And that seems to cover it, doesn't it? And what's that gonna be? It's actually gonna be the sum n equals two to infinity, two over n. You get the idea what I'm doing, right? And what's that gonna be? A divergent harmonic series, all right? That's all they're saying over here. Now, it's, there's only some, it's, I'd be honest with you, it, I, I don't know why I started with that problem, but anyway, the, the alternating series converges, but the, um, the, um, the absolute value of those terms, it doesn't converge, it's, it's harmonic. All right, so, so let's, let's explain why the AST can't be applied to this one right here. Again, I'm starting with a questionnaire. I'm not sure why I started with that question because it's a more difficult question, all right? But often the AST is misunderstood, all right? So, you know, it says, why not? Why can't the AST be, be done here? And I'm gonna say right now, it's definitely an alternating series. So that, that's given. So it's definitely an alternating series. I'm looking at that, you know, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. But then they go on to say, the reason it can't be done is because in the alternating series, you know, what I need to do for that is I need to make sure that the, um, that it's de decreasing. And so what they do is they're, you know, look at the absolute value of the terms and they're, they're looking at, I'll, I'll put out what they're looking at. They're looking at this over here. And if I were to just look at that over there, just those two here, that's all I'm looking at. What would I see? I would see one ninth and I would see one eighth, right? I hope you realize that one eighth is greater than one ninth. So what's it doing over here? It's actually increasing there, all right? By the way, I just found one example where it's increasing. So I'm saying I couldn't do that. I just couldn't do it, all right? So then they say, it, it's a, you also might want to try to show this. I don't know, I'll try it. So I'm, I'm going to look at, you know, what I'm seeing over here is a generalized pattern. So what am I seeing over here? It looks like, you know, uh, let's take a look at this one over here. It is a generalized pattern. And let me see if I can do that. And I'm looking at a generalized pattern to this. And I'm seeing things in pairs. So I'm seeing like a generalized pattern over here where I'd see like an N and then I'd see an N plus one. I would see that. And let me put that down. I'm not, I'm not, I want to see if I can use something over here. No, I don't think I want to take that pair. And I'll tell you why. Because then I have a problem with the power. So I'm just gonna be looking at something where I have the exponents three and two. And let me do that. And I'll be looking at this pair again. All right, let me write that pair down for you. I'll get my eraser out. I'm gonna write down in general, okay? So let's look at that over here. So I'm gonna put down, whoops one over, and let's see, that's n plus one, right? Squared, and the next term over there is what? One over, that would be n then, right? I'm looking at that, what I got circled up there, and that would be cubed, right? Now, what did I show before? I showed this before. All right, let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can, if we can figure that out. 
And it might be more difficult to do. I'm not saying it's going to be easy for you. So I'm going to say ends are all positive. Don't have to worry about this like I did in 119. And that's going to be n squared plus 2n plus 1. That's not so bad. And then, you know, kind of looking at it, and cubes definitely get bigger than squares at some point, right? So let's just, let's look at it. All right, let's see where this occurs. If I put one down here, you know, if I took n equals one, what would I get? I get one less than, well, that seems to work out nicely, right? You get one plus two plus one. So, you know, that, that satisfies that condition over there. So that, that works out pretty well. Let's go n equals two. When you get there, you get eight. Right, I'm looking, you know, when I get, you know, eight and then you get, four plus four plus one. Well, that seems to be okay. Let's go to n equals three. So what do you get over there? Well, let's take a look at it. If you do the three, what would you get? You get 27, nine plus six plus one. This is a failure. So what do you mean by failure is that I'm starting to see something now, all right? So what am I starting to see now? I'm starting to see something I'm not, not expecting to see and a failure over there. So let's take a look at this. It's not always true. Look at a concrete example above when n equals two. And yeah, I found, I found a failure at above n equals two, right? That's not so bad. I found it. All right. So let, let's just, you know, look at the, the problem over here and see if you can write the sum down. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy for you. It's why I wonder why they start with this example over here. But I'm looking at it, and I'm going to, I, I'm seeing that the half and the third, right? So I'll put this over here. And I'm, I'm going to say, I see something like one over two minus one over three. And you know, I'm looking at these two, and then I'm looking at these two. I'm looking at these two over here. All right. And then I'm going to say it looks like N n, n equals one to infinity. Now, what do I notice about those two? I kind of know those two, don't I? And what do I know about those two? Again, this, this was a lot of thinking over here. All right, no conclusion on the AST on that one, but um, it is an alternate series, by the way. I'm looking at it, and do I know the sums of these guys? I sure do. They're geometric, they're super simple. One half, one minus one, that's going to be one minus a half, right? It's going to be minus one third. These are very simple geometrics, by the way. What do you get over here? One, two minus one, minus one, three minus one. This would give me one minus one over three minus one is two. It's one half. That sums is one half. All right. All right. Let me, um, you know what I want to do? I want to go to um, computer and I want to show you in the computer how to write that down. So I'm going to do another share. A little, little sidetrack on that one over there. And let me go back to that. I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha. And you should be playing around with software now. Okay. So let me go to Wolfram Alpha. And I'm going to type the sum in. And what's that sum? Remember, it's going to be sum. And I'm going to type in one divided by two to the n minus one divided by three to the n. And for n equals, I think I started at one and went off to infinity, right? And one thing I like about Wolfram Alpha, it's not those that gives me the correct answer or, or actually can do it, but it types as it for me. It does say the series one half, all right? And they give me little pictures and some additional information about it, which is not bad, all right? So that's okay. We did that number one, number two. And, you know, the AST test does fail sometimes. Generally speaking, we're not looking for when it fails, we're looking when we get success. So I'm going to go back to the whiteboard. And I'm going to do the AST test now. And give me a second to go there. So the first two questions kind of conceptually difficult, no doubt about it, all right? But anyway, we did okay. Let's keep going. So what are we doing over here? I got to get problem number three, right? So let's take, a, this one says, 
show the alternating series is convergent by using the AST. So a couple of things I need to show, all right? So one thing I need to emphasize to you over here is that this thing should be written. You don't have to do that, by the way, that I can explicitly state what the AN is the problem. This is an alternating series and the AN is this one over here. So the AN in the problem is just one over N. This is an alternating series, by the way, and we're using the alternating series test. Now, what do I need to show? I need to show that um, you know that the um, that a n. Whoops, I made a mistake already. That I need to show this. In other words, the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Let's see if we can do that down. Right. So let's put this over here. Maybe I shouldn't say smaller, but but not increasing. So what's this? It's one over n. I need to show this one over n plus one. Well, remember n is a positive number. So this is really simple inequality to solve. I get n plus one is greater than n. And then what do I get? I get one is greater than or equal to zero. And this is true, all right? For the positive n's that we talked about, all right? So it's true. So we showed this, that's not bad. Then what else we have to do? We have to do the limit of the nth term. And I'll write that down for you, we write limit as n goes to infinity of the nth term, which is one over n. What I mean, the, the, I'm talking about the a n, by the way, is zero. And that's pretty easy, you know? So what do we know? We know the series converges. Now, of course, the, my, my wonder is, is it, does, it convert, does it converge absolutely? Well, let's look at the absolute convergence of it. So what do I do? I get rid of the alternating pattern on it. And what do I get? n equals one to infinity, one over n, which I know is a divergent harmonic series. So this series here is conditionally convergent. It's conditionally convergent. This stuff is written down for you. And again, we would recommend that you read it. So what do we do? We use the AST and then we looked at the absolute value of it. And we know it, was, it didn't converge. So it's conditionally convergent. All right, let's look at the next one. And next one, I'm gonna use um, the alternating series test. All right, let's take a look at that. So I'll write this down. So you know, what's the first thing I gotta show is that AN is greater than or equal to a n plus one. I want to emphasize what a n is in the problem. It's one over n squared. This should be fairly easy to do. One over n squared. And this is one over n plus one squared. Remember, we're dealing with n one forward. Everything is going to be positive, by the way. So we get n plus one squared, greater than or equal to n squared. This is n squared plus two n plus one. This is n squared. This is zero, I'm gonna subtract you know, n squared from both sides and two n plus one. And again, I hope you realize for n, one, two, three, this is always true. So I showed that. And what else do we need to do? The limit is we're doing the AST, n goes to infinity of a n, which is one over n squared is equal to zero. All right, so we, the, these things are good. So by AST, we know it's convergent. Now let's look at the absolute value of that. And what do you get over there? You get this, which is probably something I should have done first. And what do I know about this convergent P series? So what do I know about this over here? It's absolutely convergent. I really didn't need to do the AST test in that. So absolutely convergent. So convergent P series, absolutely convergent. All right, let's look at this one over here. And again, I'm, I'm gonna write down what the AN is. And what's the AN? It's three N over four N minus one. And let's see if we can do it. Let's see what we can do. The AST test, right? So it's gonna be A, N. I wanna make sure it's this condition over here. Let's write that down. So what do you get? Three N, th uh, sorry, not three N, sorry about that. Four N minus one, and you get three N plus three. And at the bottom you get four N plus four minus one, so 4n minus three, I'm sorry, plus three. Let's see if I did it right. Three n, four n minus one, three times n plus one is three n plus three, four times n plus one is four n plus four, minus, eh, looks pretty good. Let's, uh, you know, everything's positive. I have to worry about this, what you're worried about in math 119 with the signs changing. So it's gonna be, let's see, 12n squared plus nine n. 
And then I got to do this over here. So 4n times 3n is 12n squared. Then I'd get, you know, 12n minus 3n minus 3. Well, that's complicated. Take away 12n squared from both sides. 12n minus 3n is 9n. So I take 9n from both sides. And what do you get? You get this over here. And I hope you can agree that's true. What else do I need to show? The limit as n goes to infinity, 3n, 4n minus 1 is equal to 0. And what do you get over there? Well, unfortunately, you don't get 0. You don't get 0. So I'm going to say over there is that you know the AST is really not doing anything for me. So I'm going to cross this out. And what I'm going to do is I'm starting to have suspicions that I should have just looked at this limit here. And I'm looking at the test for divergence, by the way. So n goes to infinity of the nth term. Let's write this down, which is minus one to the n. And if I can show this doesn't exist um, or doesn't equal zero, I'm, I'm good to go and say it's a divergent series, right? So what's this limit going to be? Well, I would divide through by the highest degree variable. Let me write this down for you. You would get minus one to the n times three. I'm dividing through by n, by the way four minus one over n. And what does this thing give you? Well, it bounces around between minus three quarters and three quarters. So this is DNA. So what do you know by the test for divergence? Which is simplest echo of that we know the original series diverges. All right, let's look at our K. And what do you do over there? Diverges by test for divergence. Uh, also using a serious test to see what happens. It wasn't very productive. So let's take a look. Number six. Number six, again, a little difficult because I have to read, and that's a problem. And when I read, read, it slows me down. So it says, given two convergent series, this one's convergent and this one's convergent. We know that term, we know that the term by term sums, and we put this over here, also converges. All right. What about this one over here? Well, I don't know. So what are they saying? What happens when you do a product? All right, so let's, they, that's a question. I don't know, let's see what happens. So they say, show that if AN is this and this, which are both gonna be convergent series. So for example, one over N squared is convergent and you know one over N cubed is convergent. We know that, all right? How about this one over here? What would you get? you'd also get a convergent P-series. So they're asking about this one. So what are we conclusion? They give us the example. We conclude that that's convergent P-series, all right? Now let's look at this one over here. So this one over here is, you know, I'm gonna say by the AST. Well, let me write that down for you. There are a couple of things I need to show, right? So AN is one over the root of N plus one. So a couple of things I need to show. I need to show this and we'll, we'll show it. This is one over root n, and this is gonna be one over root n plus one. Again, these are, you know, it's really simple inequality. I'm not worrying because n is positive one, positive two, positive three. It's really simple. Look at this, none of the problems we had math 119. I don't know, a square of both sides maybe. Take away n from both sides maybe. And hope you realize that's always going to be true. All right, this is good. What else do we need to show? Limit as n goes to infinity of that a n. I'm sorry, I wrote a n down incorrectly. I have to correct that now. I just noticed it. It's one over root n. Sorry about that. That's zero. So this converges by the AST. Okay. Now they, exp they say explain, well, explain what? Well, it explains, I, I know why it explains by the AST. Now what they say is that, you know, we did this, we did that. They say, you know, well, here's they get, they give me this. They give me two convergent series, n equals one to infinity minus one to the n over the root n, which we know is convergent. And the other one's an identical series. And what's that gonna be? n equals one to infinity minus one to the n over root n. And they say, well, what happens if you multiply their arguments together? That's what they're giving me over here. Well, what would you get? Let's write that down. n equals one to infinity. I'll write it down for you. n 
I got to do that, don't I? So n equals one to infinity. You get n in the bottom, which no, not, not pretty easy, right? You get minus one to the two n. That's always positive. So what do you know about this? It's divergent. So here's an example. Unlike the other one where we have two convergent series, but if we multiply the arguments together, we have a divergent series, all right? Series diverges. All right, let's go back to number seven. And number seven says, you know, term of the series converges absolutely conditionally or not at all. Well, let's take a look at it. I'm gonna do the AST. And let me take a look at that. And AN, I'll write it over here for you. It's gonna be one over the cube root of N. Well, what do we need to show? Let's write this down. A N is gonna be decreasing. Let's write this down. One over the cube root of N one over the cube root of n plus one. And again, this is, I don't have to worry about this like I did in math 119, everything's positive. Like n and n plus one are always positive numbers. So I get this over here. Let me get this over here. I got a cube both sides, n plus one, n. Well, that looks pretty simple. I, I would agree with that. That's, that's certainly true. One is always greater than zero, right? So what else do I need to show? I need to show the limit. N goes to infinity, one over the cube root of N is zero. Well, that's easy. So this converges by the AST, converges AST, that's what we use. Now, that, let's see if it absolutely converges, who knows? Let's see what happens. What do you do? N equals one to infinity. That would be one over the cube root of N. Let me write a little bit differently. Well, that's a P series, it's a divergent P series. I'm sorry, I meant to say P-series. It's diversion P-series. I did it again. So this is conditionally convergent. All right, let's read it. And we do what we're supposed to do, conditionally convergent. Okay, let's keep going. All right, I always wonder if these things are alternating. And before I even say that, I want to claim to you that this may not be an alternating series. So looking at, I just want to write a few terms down. So if I did one, I would get, um, let's see, that would be pi root four. So it's one over root two, right? Over one squared, then it would be plus, I would go to two, right? And the sign of pi root two is one. So right now I know it's not alternating. Definitely not alternating. Now, granted, it might go to negative and then positive, but it's not alternating in general. So it's not an alternating series, all right? So I'm not going to use the AST on it. So what I want to do is I want to talk about it. But I do know that, um, that the assigned function, no matter what the argument is, is going to be between 1 and minus 1. All right, so what I would prefer to do is make the problem easier for me to deal with. So n equals one, and I'm gonna look for absolute convergence. Because some of those terms are gonna be negative, by the way. If you looked at pi over four and you took multiples of it, at some point it would be negative. At some point it would be negative. So I'm just gonna say the absolute value of it. So I'm gonna put this over here. And I'm going to use a comparison test. And what I'm going to compare this to? I'm going to compare it to 1 over n squared. Now, what do I know about that? I know that this series is a convergent P series. I hope you realize when I put this down over here, I'll write this down again for you. has a relationship to this one. And what's it gonna be? It's gonna be less than or equal to it. Now, why is that? This number here at most could be one. At most could be one. It's never gonna exceed one. So this is always gonna be true. So what do I know? By the comparison test, by comparison test, this is convergent. 
by the comparison test. And we're using the comparison test. I write that down. See, no, I got to put a black ink down. We're using the comparison test. All right. So I know it's convergent. So what do I know? Absolute convergence. All right. Absolute convergence written over here. I right, put this one over here. And again, my, my concern is, I wonder, is it alternating? All right, that's my first concern. Now, looking at it, I hope you realize that there are multiples of pi. And if you looked at the, 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 the sine function, I'm sorry, cosine function, the multiples of pi, uh, that's not a very good picture, is it? The, the first one would be minus one. And then you get you know two pi, that would be one then you get three pi. So it's an alternating series, all right? Definitely an alternating series. But I'm, I'm having suspicions about it. I know it's an alternating series, all right? Where the nth term is this over here. But the alternating series just not really help me out with this. And I'll tell you why, the limit of that thing is gonna be one and it should be zero, right? So I'm gonna go just back to the test for divergence on this. Let me put that down for you. Test for divergence. That couldn't be any easier, by the way. So how do you do a test for divergence here? Limit, n goes to infinity, cosine pi n over one plus one over n. Well, the limit of the bottom is really easy. It's just one. What does the top do? It bounces back and forth between one and minus one. So what's my limit? The limit is D and E, all right? So what do I know? This series diverges, all right? So it's divergent. I use the test for divergence. I did mention that. It's written over here, D and E. I put this one down. And it says determine convergence or divergence by any method. Well, I'm looking at it, it does look like an alternating series, right? By way, we'll have easier ways of doing this at some point. But right now it's definitely an alternating series. And what I'm gonna do is I'll write down what AN is. And what's A, and we'll have easier ways of doing this. There's no doubt about it. And to 6n, I think, the, I think the next section or so has a much easier, much better way of doing it. Okay, I can get tough. And I'm looking at it. Boy, I wish I had the next section to do that one because it's gonna be a lot more difficult than I would ever imagine without knowing that next section. I can't jump though, can I? Can't go to the next section. I gotta, I gotta think about this. So let's write this down. So this is gonna be N to the sixth down N times, All right? And this is six n plus one factorial, all right? So I, I, got, I have to start writing things down for you. And it's, it's, it's always tough. So this would be six n plus one. Factorials are always difficult to deal with. Then you can get six n, then you can get six n minus one. And then you get six n minus two. Well, I can't do this all day long, right? Yada, 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 all the way down to one. The question is how many factors are there? So let's see, upper, right? You got this here over here, right? So if you count them up, there's a lot of, a lot of factors there, right? And when you get over here, there'd be n six, and six, and six, yada, yada, yada. But what would the last factor be? And six, All right? You got something that's crazy to analyze, right? How many factors you got there? Well, you got n factors there. What do you got in bottom? Let's take a look at an example, okay? 
Let's take a look at n equals, I don't know, five. Right, so let's write this down. What would you get? Five to the six. Five to the six. Five to the six. Five to the six. And five to the six. All right, there's a problem with this, by the way. What do you get in bottom? Well, six times five, that's 31, right? 31, that's what five would give you, right? 30, 29, yada, 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 down to one, right? All right, that looks tough, all right? That looks tough. So I'm gonna point out something like this over here. It's the limit that's the trouble. It's the limit that's the trouble. All right, it's a big, big trouble, all right? So I'm gonna just maybe talk about a simpler form of it. That would be six n factorial. All right, we're gonna talk about this now. And I'm looking to see which one gets bigger faster. Well, I hope you start to realize, right, the six n factorial is six n, 6n minus 1, all the way down to 1. What's the number of factors over here? Upper minus lower plus 1. There's actually 6n factors. All right, look at the top. What do you get over top? You get, and I got to write this down now. n to the 6 to the n. Right? How many factors would be on top? Well, you'd get n to the six. That would be n factorial, n, n, n of the factors, right? This is very difficult to think through. I'd like you to think about it. And I'm starting to think about it and starting to realize that something is going to go faster than the other. Is it the factorial or is it the exponential? All right, I wanna to go to Sage and I'm gonna look at that and I wanna encourage you to do the same. So we're gonna do another share and I wanna go through this with you. I gotta find my work here. I wanna make sure I'm sharing the screen with you though. Yeah, I am. What number are we on? 10. I'm sorry, got to go backwards, right? And the next section of the notes is going to be a much easier way of doing this. So don't, don't, don't despair at this point. All right, what I want to do is go to Sage. And give me one second. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to reset. I'm going to let n be a variable. n equals var. Oops, I made a mistake again. Let me just clear the screen. Clear is no effect in the variable, by the way. I'm going to set a function up. I'm going to call it an. I'm going to be careful to type this in. It's going to be assigned n raised to the power 6 star n. Again, these are not easy to think through. That's why machines do help us sometimes. So 6 star n plus 1. And I want to do factorial. So I got to type in factorial. Sorry about that. 
And that's going to be six Rn plus one factorial. Oops, I mean to do that. Okay. I just want to test it out. All right, so what do you mean test it out? I want to just type in some numbers here. I want to type in A1. Let me get that number over there. Let's type in A10. Wow, that looks crazy. So I'm going to do A10. I want to approximate it, right? Well, I could do this all day long, but what do I notice is that number is really, 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 really small. All right. But again, I don't know what's going to happen long term. Like if you think 10 is long term, I don't know what's long term. So I want to look at what happens in the limit. And I'm going to go to another software in a second. All right. So let's take a look at the limit. The limit of a n as n goes towards infinity. I think it's n equals infinity, right? It's zero. All right. So what do I know about this? Let me go back to my work. And just give me one second. I get back to the whiteboard. I gotta do another share. There's nothing wrong with using software. I gotta find my share thing now. Give me one second. Okay. My claim over here is looking at limits sometimes can be incredibly difficult to do, but I want to point out we're kind of on a good path now. I help, I, I got some help with Sage. I'll write that down for you. And what do I know now? And again, it might be difficult, but what I know now, I know the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is zero. And I'm using the AST. I got another problem, man. I got to show something else. And let me write that down for you. And, and this is why we really need a better test than this AST. So it's going to be n plus one to the six n plus one, six n plus six, I'm sorry. You know what? I got to write it down. So I'm sorry. I should really write things down. I want to show a n. which again is another problem to worry about. And what's that gonna be n to the six n over six n plus one factorial greater than, uh, let's write this over here, n plus one to the six n plus six over six n plus seven factorial. And again, I'm, I'm gonna claim it, it requires work. Right, and that's what the problem with this is. And that's why we wanna to go to the next section and we'll have a better test in the next section. I think it's the next, I think the ratio test in the next section. But anyway, let, let's, let's, go to, let's get to work. So what do I get? I get, uh, let's take a look over here. And um, six N plus seven factorial N to the six N over six N plus one factorial N plus one to the six n plus six, greater equal to zero. I'm sorry, greater equal to one. Sorry about that. And again, it, it's actually you know you might look at the same. I don't even know where where I can if I can even do that. I can give it a try. And what do you get over here? I got to write it down for you. And I want to simplify this first because it's the easiest thing for me to do. And that would be n plus one to the six power. Okay, I got trouble now. I'll tell you what the trouble is going to be. I have to write it down, which can be 6n plus 7, 6n plus 6, 6n plus 5. Oh, I got to get my erase rack because I, I think I can't fit that all in there. I'll get there. 6n plus 4, 6n plus 3. And you can see how painful this is, right? And I got to get down to 6n plus 2. And that better better equal to 1. Let's take a look at if I did okay. And how many factors I got on top? I'll count them up for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I got to write this down now. 
and I'm going to do, I'm going to do six N whoops. Sorry about that. It's work six N plus seven over N plus one times six N plus six over N plus one times six N plus five over N plus one six N plus four over N plus one. I think you get the idea. 6n plus 3 over n plus 1. And what's the next one going to be? 6n plus 2 over n plus 1. And I'm hoping it's better than, better than 1. All right, now what do I know about these guys over here? Certainly kind of looking at it, uh, looking at these things over here. I hope you realize that these are all fractions where the top is going to be bigger than the bottom. So each of these numbers is greater than 1. So I'm going to say this is true at this point. All right, so what did I do? I showed by the AST test, which is an awful lot of work that this series actually converges by the AST. Here's an additional problem if I had to show it's absolutely convergent and more work. So I'm hoping that we actually get to a better test and the better test will be in the next section. I believe is the next section. The better test is actually what's called a ratio test or a root test. There's actually two tests that we could use. Let's go to the next page. And over here, they talk about alternating series. It is. They talk about the inequality. They talked about the limit. It's not difficult. Let me point out over here, AN is decreasing sequence, curves to zero. The original converges by the Leibniz test. I know this is getting more difficult. And here I suggest you investigate using a computer algebra system. By the way, Mathematica or Sage. And I really do mean that. You should. You should look at Mathematica or Sage. Limits are really tough. However, we have better methods and we'll be using those soon. All right, that was tough. I mean, I, really tough. Look at this one over here, determine a series convergence by any method. Boy, I like that, any method. By the way, it is not alternating. All right, it's not alternating. It looks like it's a positive term series. Let me write this down for you. Certainly 10 forward, this would be uh, all positive terms, right? Boy, that's easy. All right, let's take a look. And I'm gonna look at the, um, let me tell you what I'm gonna look at. Let me look at one thing at a time. Let me limit as n goes to infinity of the a n. By the way, this is the a n. Well, that's zero. That was no help at all. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a comparison test. And a comparison to this one over here, I'm going to use what's known as a limit comparison test. This is a positive term series. And I like the limit comparison test. And I'm looking at it and n over n squared minus 5n, I'm going to say compares nicely to this one over here. which I know is a divergent harmonic series. I know it. So let's take a look. Limit comparison test. N goes to infinity. Let's see, A, N, which is, what is it going to be? N over N squared minus 5N. I'm going to divide by that uh, alternate, uh, that, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, harmonic, which is like multiplying by N over 1. I want to do that limit. That's n squared or n squared minus 5n. And what do you get there? You get a finite number one, right? It's a finite number. What do I know? I know this series diverges. What test I use LCT. I think the work is over here for you. Yeah, series can, a diversion, a series diverges. All right, let's go to the next page. If there is a next page, that's number 11. No, I think we're at the end. All right, so I want to point out some of this stuff is brutally difficult. What's difficult? Increasing, decreasing, that kind of stuff. Brutally difficult, all right? So my claim over here is that computers may help you out with the limits and things like that, or increasing, decreasing, things like that. But the bottom line is we definitely need better methods in this. We definitely need better methods, all right? Not that these methods are bad methods, 
but sometimes they're really, really painful to think your way through. And it might require a machine to do a limit here or there, or to find if something is increasing or solving inequality, whatever. So we need better methods. We'll get there. All right. But thank you for paying attention.